We have a real fan application right here. This fan is servicing a dust collector, so it's bringing in the dust to the collector. This fan is exhausting it back into the building. So let's say you need to troubleshoot a fan like this and you want to determine what's the static pressure, what's the volume, what's my horsepower consumption, the three things that are called out on the curve that you got from your fan manufacturer. So let's say this is an ideal scenario. So if you want to see an ideal scenario, go see how we build a fan curve. Let's say this is that type of scenario where you either have a great run in to the fan, so you have at least five times the duct diameter of straight duct that runs into your inlet, and then off the outlet you have five times of straight duct diameter that goes off the outlet straight up, and it's just a beautiful system. It's unlikely, but we're gonna say that's the case here. Let's say in a system like that, right off the outlet of the fan, you don't have a damper like this one. And so you put in a pressure tap right here. And let's say off the inlet, you put a pressure tap a similar distance from your inlet. And so what you're picking up it, off of your outlet is your outlet pressure between the outlet of the fan and the discharge, so your exhaust. And off the inlet, you're picking up your static pressure from your tap to the very intake, way before the fan where the air is coming from. You can take that static pressure differential and figure out what the static pressure is of the fan, so what the fan is doing. And that number should line up on your fan curve or very close to it with what you measure from your amp draw on the motor. So the two things that are easiest for you to measure when you're troubleshooting is your static pressure differential and your amp draw. Your amp draw off the motor never lies. So it tells you exactly what power consumption is being consumed by the motor to drive this fan. Now in an ideal scenario, you should be able to take your differential pressure, your outlet minus your inlet static pressure, you should be able to find that point on your curve and when you go vertically down from that point where it intersects the horsepower curve, if you take that point and go to the right to your horsepower legend on your curve, that number should line up with the amp draw you're getting off of your motor. So convert your amp draw into horsepower. That number should line up on your curve in an ideal scenario with the static pressure differential that you measured. If those line up, you can be confident that the volume that's going through your fan is based on where that static pressure point was on your static pressure curve. Now all of that has to apply to your actual scenario. So an ideal situation, the curve you're looking at is accurate in terms of the speed that the fan is running at and the density of the gas that is moving through it. If you have the speed wrong or you have the density of the gas wrong, your curve won't show you exactly what you're doing. So your curve has to be based on those two parameters up front and then your differential static pressure and your amp draw and what that relates to in horsepower should line up very close to exact what you see on your curve. And that's how you troubleshoot an ideal situation. That's what you should see as you go through an ideal situation. This is not ideal. <laughs> this is reality. This is the way many of your installations are going to look. So you have an outlet damper right here. That's not ideal, but an outlet damper is a great way for you to cut back on the volume that's going through your machine if it's too much volume for what you actually need. On the intake side of this, this isn't ideal at all. We have an inlet box on here, and if you watch our inlet box video, you'll understand that this is a, the best way to do a really bad thing. You don't want to have 90 degree intake right before your inlet of the fan, that's bad for your fan's overall efficiency because this is just a static pressure number. This inlet box adds to your static pressure by maybe one inch of water. This outlet damper adds a little bit to your static pressure. Even if it's wide open, those fins are in the air's path and so it's going to impede the flow and that's a slight static pressure. So let's say you have a port right here where you're measuring your static pressure off the outlet. And you have a port right here, or on the other side of the inlet box, right here, where you're measuring the intake static pressure. 
Okay, let's say you're getting a reading on site where your outlet pressure is 13 inches of water. Your inlet pressure is negative seven inches of water. So you're reading right here and right here and your, the way that you read that is that your fan is doing 20 inches of static pressure. Okay, so let's say you think that. Now you take your amp draw off of your motor and let's say off the amp draw, you get that you're doing 20 inches of static pressure at 100 horsepower off the motor because your amp draw relates to 100 horsepower. Well then let's say you go to your fan curve and you expect it all to line up. But when you look at your fan curve, what you see is that 20 inches of static pressure, as you go down from that, looks like it should be taking 150 horsepower from your motor. So why does the discrepancy exist? Again, we're going to assume that your fan curve is accurate in terms of the speed that the fan is running and the density of the gas that is coming in. So you have those two things accurate, yet still your static pressure that you're reading from this port and this port in the differential is not lining up with what you expected from your motor horsepower. You're only doing 100 horsepower off your motor. You expect it to be doing 150. So what's the difference? What's the problem? Well, in your system, you have real system effects that are, that are affecting your fan. They are this damper and they are this inlet box. So let's say your port is right here. It's not picking up the effect of that inlet box and what it has on the fan. So while that inlet box is adding one, maybe two inches of static pressure in inches of water, you didn't read that up here at this port. And so this is chewing up maybe one or two inches of static pressure. So let's say you go, okay, then I've got 22 inches of differential at the fan. And you look at that point on the curve, but that still shows that you should be doing at least 130 horsepower. So why is your motor still reading only 100 horsepower? Now you have to look at the damper. This is another potential system effect. Let's say that you guys set your damper to 70% open because when you first installed this, that was the set point you needed to put it at in order to make your system work. Well, this is fabricating static pressure for your fan. So it's making your fan think there's more static pressure in your system. A fan doesn't think, but let's just say for this purpose, your fan sees four inches of static pressure in the damper because the damper is 70% open. So your damper is just chewing up some static pressure. As you look back at your fan curve, if you apply that extra four inches of static pressure that this damper is eating up, and you apply the extra maybe one inch of static pressure that your inlet box is eating up, you now have 20 inches of differential pressure plus an inch of dead pressure on your inlet box plus four inches of dead pressure on your outlet damper because it's open only 70%. Add all those numbers together and you have about 25 inches of static pressure. Now go back to your fan curve. Look at 25 inches of static pressure. Does it make more sense now? As you go down from that point, you're probably intersecting a point on the horsepower curve that's very close to 100 horsepower, which aligns with what you read when you looked at the amp measurement that you took off of your motor legs. So that's how you assess, troubleshoot a real fan application. This is just one example. There are many more things that could affect your static pressure readout. It's, but there's potentially right off the outlet. I see applications all the time where the outlet comes up and instantly goes that way. Well, in an application like this, that's terrible. You've got air rolling off here and it's rolling off in my direction because that's the way that the wheel has been spinning. And so it wants to go this way naturally and you take your ductwork and instantly route it that way. That's dead pressure that hits right here. The fan sees that pressure. You might not measure that pressure if your outlet pressure readout is further down your stream. So consider that as you're troubleshooting real applications like this one and how that manifests itself back on your manufacturer's fan curve.